Hello and welcome to the Tensile Ground Coffee, a few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy it while having your coffee. Well here I am at my very own sandbox. Now, who as a kid didn't enjoy playing with the sand either on the beach or with their very own sandbox? I've got all the tools here, we've even got a sieve, looks like a, looks like a four millimeter sieve. Wow, look at that. Is that an ISO sieve Brian? I'm not sure. Anyway, what I'm going to do today is demonstrate how sandcastles work. So I've got my bucket here. Now, even as a child, you would know that this is the wrong way to build a sandcastle out of dry sand. Because what's going to happen when I turn it upside down, let's put it in here. I am going to get a sand cone, not a sand castle. Because the sand doesn't have enough strength, it falls to its angle of repose and you form a sand cone like that. And there's been a lot of academic time spent studying just the sand cone, but let's not go into that now. So what I have here is the same sand but wet. And you'll know that that is more the sort of material from which to construct a sand castle. So let's put that back. This time we're going to make our sand castle out of this wet sand. Let's compact it down a bit. And what we should see is when we turn this upside down is a much better castle instead of a cone. And that is all to do with the water that's in it. But the sand is not saturated, as you see. It has a little bit of water in it. Okay, I think that's enough. So this time... Right. Come in close, Brian, and see what happens as we lift up castle that time. Wow, look at that. Not bad. So now the sand is much stronger. Instead of falling to that cone shape, we now have an almost vertical slope. So why is that? That is due to the partial saturation in the sand. Why well, do you have partial saturation? Because soil particles, like a lot of solids, are hydrophilic. The water is attracted to those particles and tries to cover as much of the area as possible. But water also has surface tension, and that generates the tension, if you like, or the suction, negative pore pressure in the soil. So in terms of effective stress, that negative pore pressure is actually increasing the effective stress. So it's that extra effective stress between the particles, the suction in the water draws the particles together, giving them more friction between them, so they're able to be, so they are stronger and able to support that much steeper slope. And if you get it into smaller pore sizes like a clay, that suction can be much greater and has a much greater effect on the properties of the clay. But as you will remember from your trips to the beach, is as the tide comes in, if that sand at the base becomes saturated, you can see already that the base is starting to lose strength there. So we're losing uh, some of the support there and there it is just starting to collapse. I give it a bit more water here. You see we're getting collapsed like that. So when the sand becomes saturated, it's losing that negative pore pressure. The pore pressure goes a little bit positive actually. You're losing that extra effective stress and that extra strength. So there you go, just a bit of fun from a sandbox is uh, just a quick explanation of how sandcastles work. So that's all for this episode of Tensile Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.